Good afternoon. I'm Eric Schambarger, Director of Environmental Sustainability for the City of Milwaukee and our Environmental Collaboration Office. This is an informational webinar on the city's request for proposals uh, for RFP number 19428, which is for net zero energy homes built using advanced building construction techniques. Uh, this is a re-recording re of the event we did on February 28th, where we got lots of questions from participants, and I will do my best to uh, answer those questions as, as accurately as possible. This project is one of the 10 big ideas contained in the city's climate and equity plan. Uh, in the near term, the project aims to demonstrate that net zero energy homes can build, be built affordably using advanced building construction techniques. Uh, that means things like modular construction or panelized construction. In other words, building major housing components in a factory environment and, and building them on site. Longer term, the project aims to attract an ABC manufacturing company to the city of Milwaukee. This is to accelerate the production of affordable starter homes to meet demand, particularly on scattered vacant lots. Uh, the city has a number, uh, has a thousands of vacant lots scattered throughout neighborhoods, and we really want a strategy to be able to accelerate the construction of new homes there. We want to create year round family supporting jobs, building new homes that we can be proud of. And we want to support environmental justice and the dignity of work. In other words, we're trying to impact both sides of the affordable housing question. We want to bring the cost of housing down while raising incomes up. Uh, the full project in the background in Milwaukee can be found at milwaukee.gov slash net zero energy housing. And we are working with a net through a national partnership with the Advanced Building Construction Collaborative at advancedbuildingconstruction.org to see how this project fits within a national movement uh, to accelerate uh, these advanced building construction techniques. So the project has uh, two major components. In phase one, we are working to build model net zero energy homes, uh, at least one single family unit and one duplex or two family uh, property. These are to be sold at owner occupants at an affordable price. In other words, these are spec homes. The homes are to be built using advanced building construction techniques such as modular, panelized, and, we, and not stick built. So in other words, again, we want homes to be built, uh, major components to be built in a factory environment uh, year round. Uh, the unit should be built and available for sale by October 24, October 2024. Uh, we are providing a $500,000 total subsidy for the two units. Um, and then the builders can sell those units for $125,000 per unit um, to help be part of the total financing package, as well as they can also bring tax credits, uh, federal tax credits that may be available uh, to the project financing. There's $24,000 available from the city to support other housing upgrades on the same block of those homes as a way to build good faith effort in the community that we're not just uh, building new units, but that we're trying to uh, build uh, and improve the whole block that we're working on. So that's phase one. Phase two, we want to attract an advanced building construction manufacturer here to the city of Milwaukee. We know that's a longer term uh, prospect, but that we want the model homes to be thought about in conjunction with the potential housing manufacturer. So there's a $325,000 subsidy available to attract a housing manufacturer to the city of Milwaukee. And depending on the number of jobs and other things created, we can have conversations with economic development officials uh, to see if other uh, funding may and incentives may be available. Um, in order to qualify for that subsidy, we need a signed lease agreement or purchase for space in Milwaukee and a development agreement with the city of Milwaukee approved by 2024. Uh, there's a separate housing finance plan to build a, a pipeline for further demand. So in our initial discussions that we had uh, with firms last in, in 2021, we did a, a request for information from prospective manufacturing firms. And what we heard very clearly from that uh, discussion was that we understand manufacturers need to have a picture of um, what the market could be for homes beyond just these two, two model homes. And so we, we put together a whole housing finance plan to show how uh, 
once we have a factory in place, we can work with the broader uh, Community Development Alliance and other fu uh, housing funding partners to really ramp up the, the, the pipeline uh, for these new homes using new market tax credits and other financial techniques. So these things go together, but the, the main core deliverable for the grant right now is the, the model units. Uh, we aimed with this RFP to find the balance between defining the specifications for homes that the city wants to see while preserving some uh, creativity in, in the designs that, that proposers can bring. Uh, in the RFP, we've selected some lots um, on 19th Street here in Milwaukee. We will shortly provide the survey uh, for the, that site as well as the, the topography of it. If for some reason that site doesn't work, um, once you get into discussions with the community or uh, other other considerations, we will work to find you an alternative site, but it does have to be in a what's called a qualified census track, and that's laid out in the RFP as well. The energy standard is these need to be Department of Energy Zero Ready Homes version two. That's the minimum. Uh, passive house is another standard that you can use as well. That's kind of preferred actually. Um, that goes beyond the zero energy ready standard, and uh, but we did not require that because we understand that can uh, create uh, cost considerations that have to be weighed with other factors on the project. We want an attractive design that fits within the neighborhood. So, you know, there should be some architectural character to these homes. Uh, they need to be, have solar energy, and that's a minimum of two kilowatts uh, on the property. And we are asking the developer to increase the system size if if there's room to get uh, to meet the home's energy needs and get as close as possible to net zero energy uh, use on an annual basis. We're looking for three bedrooms and one and a half baths, um, 1,200 square feet uh, per unit. Uh, a front porch is important for public safety to get people you know sitting out and and keeping eyes on the street. Um, they need to have a permanent foundation. However, a basement is optional. So these are not manufactured homes that are on a chassis, but rather they have to be permanently affixed to the ground. And that can be through uh, a traditional basement and foundation, helical piers, slab on grade, but whatever you choose has to um, meet the, the building code. And these have to be code compliant. Um, so if it's a panelized construction, the code, ha uh, code review happens through the city. If it's a modular home, it must be certified uh, through the state. And there's a process in the RFP that lays out how to get your modular home designs uh, code certified. Uh, but we encourage all of you to read the RFP for complete specifications, uh, which do allow for some design freedom. So in the RFP, um, we will look for floor plans and front elevations to get a feel for how these look, but they don't have to have the full architectural drawings in time for the proposal. Uh, this grew out of the climate and equity plan for the city. So in addition to doing net zero energy to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we are also trying to support uh, racial and economic equity in the city. And that means a number of things. First of all, it means community engagement on the project. So uh, as we go into the neighborhood that we're hoping to build houses, the developer will be expected to engage with the community and hold community meetings to explain the project, get feedback on the designs and work with the um, the residents to be kind of the the first market that we're looking to sell these homes to so rather than you know one thing you'll hear from residents is is the concern that outsiders are, are coming into the neighborhood and we're you know, may price them out and so to address that we want to make sure uh, we're giving people that live in these neighborhoods already the first opportunity to buy the buy the properties the homes need to be affordably priced and sold to owner occupants so that means they the sell, sale price per unit is $125,000, so $125,000 for the single family, $250 for the duplex. Um, they must be sold to homeowners. The single family is sold to it must be sold to a homeowner making $50,000 or less. The duplex uh, to a homeowner making $75,000 or less, not, not counting the income they would uh, get from renting out the other unit. Um, we, we want to market the homes to local residents. As I said, uh, there is a great collaboration that we work with called Take Root Milwaukee. They have uh, an existing network of banks and home buyer counseling agencies. And so the easy path there is to work with the existing groups that are doing home buyer counseling to find uh, buyers uh, for these homes. Uh, we really want to encourage diversity in the project team. 
And so uh, there are points that will be awarded to teams that that can show diversity, um, it, whether it be the developer or the, the general contractor or the, the, the entire team. But the important thing is that uh, we have a team that, uh, you know, is from diverse backgrounds. Uh, the program requires work through for the on-site work. I mean, not the work that happens in the factory, but the construction that happens on site. 20% of the hours are supposed to go to um, underemployed workers through the residence preference program. There's a link to that uh, in the website and, and the city has people that can help you work through that process to find uh, workers that might be, uh, might you help, might help you meet that requirement. For the factory itself, we want to see family supporting wages that pay at least $20 an hour plus benefits, with the idea being that uh, the workers in these factories might be a prospective market for the homes coming out of the factories. Uh, the idea that, that people should be able to afford the thing that they're building. And we want durable homes um, with a low cost of ownership, including low energy bills. So the proposal should seek to provide the best balance of aesthetics, energy performance, durability, square footage, and amenities that can be affordably replicated in the future with what we call mass customization. So the idea there is that um, we don't want just cookie cutter homes that all look the same throughout the city. They should have you know, maybe a basic uh, floor plan, but uh, you know, have some customization on the outside so people can feel like they don't all look exactly the same. Uh, one unique thing with this RFP is that we have what we call a teaming process. So we aim to have an integrated design approach um, that is best served by an experienced team of, you know, an architect, developer, housing manufacturer, and a general contractor for the on-site work. And what we've learned in looking at this industry is that it's best to have the developer and the architect directly working with a, a factory provider so that the designs that are being developed for the property can easily be built in a factory environment, and that means having a, this team. Um, we understand that we might need to help form those teams, and so you know we can imagine a situation where you might have a Milwaukee area developer and on-site general contractors needing to team up with a national manufacturer who's interested in opening a new factory in Milwaukee, or if it's a Wisconsin you know manufacturer. Uh, that wants to uh, apply for this, that they have a plan to expand uh, in this in the city of Milwaukee. Um, and so the RFP includes an optional teaming partner list. We are working with the Advanced Building Construction Collaborative to offer a facilitated teaming session on March 17th, where interested developers and manufacturers can introduce themselves and get connected. This is 100% optional and is not required to submit a proposal. Um, but it is, an, uh, is a way that if you're a national company and need connections in Milwaukee, a, a development team, you can get hooked up there or vice, uh, vice versa. The RFP schedule is as follows. Uh, the, the RFP was issued on February 20th, 2023, and we opened the teaming partner list at that time. Uh, questions? came in from uh, the original webinar that we hosted on the 28th, and I will answer those at the end of this uh, here as well. Um, but you can still submit questions all the way up until uh, today. Uh, answers to questions will be posted online uh, via an addendum. Again, I'll answer some of those questions here. If you want to participate in the facilitated teaming session, um, you have to fill out a form, which uh, we will uh, send out or put a link on our website. Uh, by March 14th. So if you want to participate on the March 17th facilitated session, you have to have your information in by the 14th. If you don't want to be on the facilitated session but still want to be on the list, you have to have that information in by March 22nd. But regardless, use the same form uh, to submit that information to be on the on the teaming list. We will post the final teaming list on, on March 23rd. Uh, there's a second round of questions that can be submitted all the way up to March 28th and we will post the final uh, set of questions on, on March uh, 31st. The RFP closes on April 18th. Um, we will then take about uh, the next month to review those and potentially host uh, interview sessions with the top candidates and hope to have the contract awarded uh, hopefully in, ju in June or July. Uh, that will give us the rest of 2020 
three to get the designs finalized, to do some of the community outreach and start construction in, in 2024. All of the RFP information is available on the Bonfire portal. You can see the URL uh, there. You do need to register uh, to submit to this RFP and get up to date on all of the, um, the questions and answers and, and all of those sorts of things. So please do uh, register uh, in the Bonfire portal to uh, submit your documents. So all, again, all of the information is there. All of the submissions are done through, through bon the Bonfire portal. Um, we received questions in the chat uh, when we originally did this, and I'll go through those. Um, again, all correspondence has to be submitted in writing to the purchasing office. Marina uh, Litvinets is our procurement specialist, so all communication must go to her. Do not send me emails uh, about this RFP uh, while it is open, but they you can and are encouraged to submit questions to Marina. Uh, with that being said, I will answer the questions that we've uh, received so far. First question is, will the city do the subdividing or will a team need to go through the process? So the city and its sub surveyor have proposed a subdivision of the lot into three 35 foot sections. Um, we will send that proposed survey and topographical map out. However, the city will not act to subdivide the lot until it is awarded to the project and we have consulted with the developer. So our initial thinking is that, uh, again, we'll work off these three lots. Uh, please note that the maximum width of the single family home is 24 feet wide. This is to ensure that the floor plan is replicable on a standard 30 foot lot. So we have a little bit of extra room for the pilots, but we want to do designs that can be replicated on standard 30 foot lots uh, in phase two. Uh, the next question is, will the plan be coordinated with the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022? Um, and the answer is yes. Developers are encouraged to utilize IRA tax credits with the building project budget. Um, there's a, the White House is a clean energy for all guide to talk about these tax credits. Um, some tax credits are currently available and there's other rebate programs that'll be coming out later this year. Um, we as a city cannot provide tax advice, but we encourage you to look into the, um, the guidance that has been issued by the federal government about uh, those tax credits and use them uh, if you can. Question three is, what is the expected final price of these homes? Should we expect a $125,000 price point for the single family and a $250,000 price point for the duplex? And the answer is yes. Uh, question four is, what interest rates is the city expecting to be available to potential buyers in 2024? Uh, the answer is the city does not establish interest rates and cannot speculate on interest rates in 2024. Developers are encouraged to work with the Take Root Milwaukee partners, WIDA, or other lending institutions to support responsible lending practices uh, to borrowers. May I get a transcript of the, of the meeting? Yes, uh, we are recording this meeting and uh, with a transcript. Question six is, in other words, what can a person with a $50,000 income expect to spend on a house at the end of 2024? So the answer is for this project, a person, person should expect to purchase a purchase price of $125,000 for a single family unit. Question seven, do you foresee an RFP for multifamily housing? Uh, no, not at least coming out of the Environmental Collaboration Office. Question eight, will the 45L tax credit go through the state or through the IRS? The answer is the 45L tax credit is administered through the IRS um, and we will put a link uh, in the written answers to the IRS website for additional information. Question nine, would the two homes then in effect be spec homes to be sold to the by the awarded team? And the answer is yes. Question 10, what process do you have in place to ensure that all products will be green products? The answer is on page 15, proposers should provide a quote, description of materials proposed for key components, including structural elements, siding, flooring, and countertops. Proposers may, but are not required to provide third party certification of green products. The evaluation team will weigh quality, cost design, among other factors in scoring in the proposals. Question 11, when will the city subsidy be available for use by the developers? When can it be drawn upon? The answer is the city will establish a payment schedule based on a negotiated set of deliverables. So, you know, we'll look at, you know, a payment when the designs are finished and other 
key milestones along the way. Question 10, what are your thoughts on platforms like Divi to enable homeowners help with their affordability concerns? It's an equity enablement platform that's adapted to recent trends in home ownership by buying behavior. Um, definitely encourage the city to look it up and forward a written response. Also, by about green materials, we should consider how EPDs and LCAs are part of the building system consideration. But embodied operational carbon would be a healthy perspective. The answer to that question is Divi appears to be a rent to own system. Under this RFP, homes to be are to be sold to an owner occupant. Um, however, longer term and future phases, the, the rent to own model is a possible consideration, just not for the model model homes in this RFP. Uh, embodied and, and operational carbon are not a scoring criteria in this RFP. Question 13, what is the required square footage? The answer is a minimum of 1,200 square feet per unit. Question 14, can both homes, single family and duplex, be on the same parcel? The answer is no, the lots will be subdivided. Question 15, what is the approval timeline for the RFP? Proposals will be evaluated by May 9th with optional interviews the week of May 15th. See the RFP for complete details. Question 16, has a conversation been had regarding zoning and allowance for ADUs or multiple residents on a single parcel similar to Chicago zoning updates? The answer is yes, the city of department is kicking off the new quote, growing Milwaukee project to make updates to our zoning code. The project will include a year of engagement and amendment to the citywide policy plan to establish confirmed city goals and recommendations in place for the zoning code up, zoning updates, including accessory dwelling units or ADUs. The planning will carry out the zoning, the planning department will carry out the zoning code updates in the following year in 2024. Uh, question 17, if, if the RFP is asking for one single family home and one two family home, wouldn't it follow that the two family home would be built on a lot twice as large as a single family home? The answer is the proposed subdivision contemplates three 35 foot lots. This assumes that the duplex will be a stacked two story form. The city views this model as more replicable on other vacant lots. Proposers may, however, submit a design for the side by side duplex. The city may subdivide the parcel according to the designs of the winning proposers after negotiation. Additionally, the RFP allows proposers to use a third parcel to build an additional single family house, although the total subsidy for all units is capped at $500,000. Question 18, I have signed up for the RFP. Where is the March 17th registration? Uh, we will put a link to that uh, on our website. Uh, it is also contained on pages 12 to 13 of the RFP itself. Question 19 is, Will, will there be an opportunity for the UWM School of Architecture and Urban Planning to get up undergraduate and graduate students involved in the longer term process? The answer is this project is an open RFP. The city's Environmental Collaboration Office worked with UWM School of Architecture and Urban Planning faculty and students on concepts for net zero energy homes. The program students and graduates are welcome to submit a proposal or try to be part of a team that submits a proposal. However, there is no requirement in the RFP that the winning proposer work with UWM on the project. Uh, this is concludes the answers to all of the questions that um, I have received so far. And uh, this also concludes the webinar. Please do uh, create a bonfire account again uh, to receive updates uh, on the, uh, the RFP. And we look forward to hopefully either seeing you on the a March 17 teaming list or uh, reviewing your proposals as part of this project. Thank you for your interest in uh, net zero energy homes in the city of Milwaukee and have a great day.